What's the best part about living in Cape Town? <laughs> right? Um, so my name's Jared with three eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I grew up in Bridgetown, Athlone, which is a rural suburb uh, in Cape Town. Um, growing up, there wasn't like a lot of positive influences or role models to look up to. Um, people were just chilling on corners, smoking, drinking, not really like pushing anything. Um, and so, from a first-hand experience, I saw my parents, you know, work very, very hard for a better life um, for themselves, for my brother and I. And through that, I kind of got exposed to different avenues and like different people. Um, and so we moved out of Bridgetown and then just moved around Cape Town as well. Um, and then through those experiences, like I kind of got into contact with successful artists. Um, but where I grew up, it wasn't really a thing. And so once I kind of decided that was what I wanted to do, um, I just kind of committed to that. Um, and then over the years, I started, you know, building that brand and image um, and also allowing other artists to do the same thing back in Bridgetown and other um, underprivileged areas that I also experienced. Um, so, th yeah, through that, I um, decided and I became um, the person that I wanted to be, which was an artist, a creative director and also an activist. Um, because I feel like the message that I had it was deeper than just, you know, pretty art or, you know, painting something for the heck of painting it. But I wanted to create work that has substance, that has meaning, um, that would outlive, you know, certain trends and, and things. Um, so I always say, like, I create timeless pieces, you know, pieces that you can look at 50 years, 100 years, 200 years from now, and it will still hold the same gravity and weight. I never tried to dilute my message, like, my message has always been strong and it still holds like a lot of weight. So there's been spaces where I couldn't exhibit just because of that. So for me it was trying to find the spaces that would allow me to share that message. And then fortunately through that, like I've kind of built my client base around it. So instead of like trying to put into a category of something that someone else has already done, like I've created my own. You're either going to have to finesse or you're going to have to be finessed. Um, and sometimes you learn it the hard way, sometimes you learn it the easy way. Uh, so with galleries, they usually take a commission. Um, so they take anywhere from 25% to 90%. I realized this, so I was like, okay, hey, cool. How can I push my art in a gallery space without having to compromise you know, my price and my integrity and my value? because galleries will also try to push your value down in order to, when they add their markup, it needs to get to like a certain level. So once I kind of figured that out, I was like, okay, cool. I'll put my art up in certain spaces, you know, where I agree with like the ethos, the message, um, if they can push my art in the right way. Um, and then I also push it myself. So I needed to you know, sit down, I needed to send out emails, I needed to you know, speak to certain people, trying to get my art into spaces. Um, and yeah, I started selling it independently through that avenues. But I also learned that if I put it up in galleries, they can also do that work for me. So their commission comes from that, instead of you know, just giving them an art piece and then making money off selling it. So once I learned that trick, I was like, okay, cool. Now I can put my work up in spaces where they can sell it, but I can also sell it myself. Um, so now through that, I've gotten you know, invitations to exhibit at other galleries where I think before I wouldn't even be allowed in the space. And through just like, I think that consistency and you know, creating that name and brand and identity, people kind of gravitated towards that. Um, so yeah, I'm getting to a place where I don't even have to go to galleries anymore, like galleries are, are coming to me. So for me, as a skater, I kind of felt um, the love of joining a community. And through that community, you kind of stay away from all the pollutants. And so 
I just want to share that again as a way to you know use skating as an outlet but also use art in as, as an outlet um, and so yeah we just get skateboards we let the kids skate we let them paint we show them also how to paint um, get food supplies get school supplies um, and then we also get presents like depending on which time of the year it is And so that's what I kind of want to share with other young creators and artists as well. It's like, you don't necessarily have to follow someone else's blueprint. You can create your own blueprints. Like, um, and now I'm even trying to steer away from conventional canvases. So for my next exhibition, for example, um, I'm constructing a cube, I'm building um, a bicycle, I'm going to be painting a bicycle. Um, also building like a box where I'll be using like foliage and different things and different resources just to also like give artists that creative license if you're not, like I said in the beginning, it's just all about exposure. So when I was five years old, that was the first time I was actually introduced to art and to this day I still remember the piece and that skateboard piece. Um, so it was based off of that, like an artist came to my school he drew two lines, buildings, and he had someone going, walking down the street with like a saxophonist on the left. That stuck with me. And for me, I'm just trying to like pay that forward. Like, I don't know if it's going to impact the next kid or not, but I can plant the seed um, and make sure that I nurture it. And eventually, if that kid decides that he wants to grow up and become an artist, you know, that exposure was there from a young age. So, yeah, it's always just about, you know, paying that thing forward and investing in the next generation. Um, I feel like the older you get, you start to get stuck in your ways a bit. And it's very difficult to, you know, to break out of certain patterns of thinking and all those. And so that's always just trying to invest in the youth as much as possible because it's such like a, a fundamental age and time. Um, and I think with the way that society is going, you need to kind of bring them back to, you know, their inherent nature and instilling them that confidence as a young African. Um, I think it's been taken away like over time. And so I'm just trying to bring that back and show them like, yo, you can be yourself, you can be confident, you can be secure in your identity, you can create unapologetically. Um, yeah, and just be yourself. Yeah.